Good evening. Merry Christmas to you all. Welcome to Jones Memorial on this Christmas Eve. I am Claire Sauer, the pastor here. It is good to be celebrating with you um, on this occasion, on this Christmas Eve. And I, uh, as we come together tonight, as we come in celebration, as we come um, to worship our our newborn king, our newborn savior, I just want to remind you that we are working to keep everybody safe and we do recommend masks and social distancing uh, as, as one way of doing that. So we would appreciate um, what you can do uh, to help keep those of us who are here uh, safe. And as we begin our worship together, will you stand and let's join together in the call to worship. Darkness. We who walk in darkness have seen a great light, a light that is joy for all the earth, a light that announces new life. In joy, we greet this light. In this light, we see that our Savior has come. And will you remain standing now and let's sing together hymn number 238, Angels We Have Heard on High. may be seated and at this time I'd like to invite the Bradfords forward to light our advent wreath.
Good evening. I invite all of our little angels to come on down front. They would like to join me. You don't be scared. It's just Miss Ashley. You know, tonight is a very special night. Did you know that? You know, this whole month, we have been talking about the chrismons, which means Christ monogram, right? And you know what? These are things that help us remember Jesus, all the amazing names that he had. And one of the amazing names that he has is he's the light of the world. And the candle helps show that. You know, when I was a little person, I loved this song. Have you ever heard the song, This Little Light of Mine? You've never heard this song? <laughs> Ever? I cannot believe that. Well, I'm not going to sing it, okay, because that's not one of my gifts. But it, <laughs> later, we'll sing it later. But it says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? And then it talks about how you hide it or other things. And it says, we're not supposed to hide it. We're supposed to shine it, right? We're going to shine our light. Well, Jesus is our light. And he wants us to shine his light through us to others. You know what? When we allow Jesus to be our light, he shows us the right path. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, he shows us which way to go. And so tonight, you have the opportunity to be able to make a chrismon, a candle chrismon. And Miss uh, Lily is going to come up here. And she's going to pass out the packet. And not only do you have the opportunity um, to put your little stickers on it and you can shine it later, but you also have some really cool discussion questions to have with your family. Does that sound fun? All right, so Miss Lily is going to be passing those out. So let's remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Can we celebrate that together tonight? Can we celebrate that together? Yes, I thought so. All right. We also have more of these, and if you missed them in the back, we'll make sure that you get some. Also, we have a a pre-K and under program going on, so if your child is pre-K and under and they would like to join the fun, we're going to be leaving here in just a second. All right? But everyone else, I invite you. Let's say a prayer together. Can we say a prayer? All right. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you are to us. And thank you for being the light of the world. And help us to shine your light every day. And help us to not hide it, but to shine it bright. Because then you will be glorified. Amen. All right. Y'all may welcome to go back to your parents. Or come over here. I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift with every breath I'm
Would you guys um, just take a moment to pray with me for just one moment? God, we, we thank you that you did come as a poor, weak, defenseless baby boy born in a feeding trough filled with hay and wrapped in clothes that they had lying around. God, we thank you that you came to this earth to save us, to rescue us, to bring us in right relation with you, God. We praise you and we thank you, God. We praise you for the ministry of Jesus and the stories that we have, the lessons that he taught us as he put on flesh and walked around with us, God. We praise you and we thank you for that, God. We praise you for the lessons that he taught us. And God, we praise you and we thank you for the lesson in prayer that he taught us in this ministry, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to remind you of the offering stations around the sanctuary. Because of our COVID protocols in the church, we don't pass a plate, but we invite you to give uh, whenever you want in the service. We have offering stations towards the back of the doors, and we invite you to do it as an act of worship in this space here, and not a Christian to do box. So, whenever you want to, you can give to those stations. All right, now if you are willing and able, if you stand with us and sing, uh, sing the praise to God. So. through 
be seated. This evening, this evening as we come together, um, we are continuing uh, a sermon series that has guided us through Advent um, called Incarnation, and incarnation means in the flesh, and we're thinking about all the traits of Christ, um, all the traits of God that, that Christ embodies, that Christ incarnates in the world. And so tonight, um, appropriately, as we come to this Christmas Eve candlelight service, we're thinking about Christ who is the light of the world. And so we read John's Christmas story this morning. This is uh, this evening, <laughs> creature of habit. Uh, this this uh, comes from the first chapter of John, the first five verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So about 25 or 30 years ago, I was riding in the car with my family. It was Christmas time. We had a tradition that after dinner one night, sometime in mid-December, usually pretty soon after school got out, we would, we would pile into the family car, which was usually a wood-paneled station wagon, and, uh, and we would drive around town looking at the Christmas lights. Well, on this particular night, we followed the highway out of town, out of the town where I grew up, and into the next town, and as we drove, my parents were talking. They were talking about a family that lived in this town where we were headed. Um, and I don't remember exactly what or how it was said, but, but on that ride, in that conversation, I learned that just a few days um, before, a young man named Darren Morrison had died in a car accident. Darren was the teenage son of one of my dad's co co-workers. They lived in this next town over. He was several years older than I was. My family didn't really know him uh, very well, just about as much as you know or get to know someone uh, when you see him at the occasional company picnic or whatever. To this day, though, I cannot, I cannot hear the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, without thinking of Darren. I learned a few years ago that the same is true for my sister. And we discerned that the song must have been playing on the radio when my parents shared the news of, of Darren's untimely death. And so now every time I hear that song, that's what I think of. As I would imagine that every Christmas, the Morrison family faces the reality that once again, Christmas will come and go You know, we all carry a lot of baggage. There is so much hurt, and there is so much pain, and there is so much darkness in the world. But at the same time, we approach Christmas time every year with expectations of perfection. It's this really amazing dichotomy. We spend time decorating our homes just so we we buy candles with holiday scents to create this certain mood or ambiance. We make sure to purchase these amazing gifts for our loved ones and especially our children. Even the music this time of year is special. But then at the same time, we're dealing with all this crazy stuff, aren't we? This, these things that are happening in our lives, we're forced to face Christmas for the first time without a loved one or we're keenly aware of all the people 
maybe with no family at all or maybe no home at all. There are soldiers who are deployed and their children are reveling in the magic of Christmas without mom or dad there to celebrate with them. It's really strange, don't you think? It's like hearing the gentle melody of a little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the lie, see thee lie, and in your mind is this image of a totally wrecked car. We long for light. And what we really need at Christmas time is light, a light that shines in the darkness. And maybe that's why we get so caught up in trying to make Christmas perfect. We desperately want Christmas to be happy and joyful. And I imagine that because we work so hard to make Christmas perfect every year, we also imagine that the first Christmas was perfect. Absolutely perfect, maybe. In the stable, everything was serene. The baby slept quietly in the manger while two adoring and totally awake parents looked on. All around them were animals nestled in the hay, sleeping soundly. In the fields outside, the shepherds were serenaded by the most beautiful of heavenly choruses, the likes of which no earthly choir could ever match. And thousands of miles away in the east, some wise men calculated the meaning of a bright star newly revealed on the horizon. All is calm. All is bright, right? Not exactly. Things started out, or started south, eight or nine months before when Mary got the news that she was pregnant out of wedlock. The pregnancy got a little more complicated when Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem near the end of her pregnancy to register in the census. And wouldn't you know, not long after they arrive, Mary goes into labor, but there's no proper place available for them as Mary prepares to give birth. At the point at which the innkeeper pointed Mary and Joseph to a stable, Mary must have been absolutely frantic, and Joseph even more so. These are not serene moments. And to be relegated to a stable among animals to give birth, definitely not ideal. The animals were probably agitated that there was a disturbance in their resting place. Mary was probably freaking out because there was no bed and she was surrounded by animals and it was cold and it was dirty. And then the baby was born and there was no place to put him but a manger, the manger which held the hay that the animals ate. I don't think you could concoct a less ideal scenario. The unplanned pregnancy, the sudden census, the stable, the manger, if anything could go wrong for Mary and Joseph that year, it did. And here they are now, surrounded by animals with their newborn child lying in a feeding trough. On that first Christmas, anything that could go wrong did go wrong. Except for the fact that into all of that wrongness came the most right thing this world has ever known. Into all of the disappointment and all of the fear and all of the doubt came this child of promise, a child of promise and joy and hope. Proof Proof, friends, that Christmas doesn't have to be ideal in order to be perfect. Into the darkness of the world, there shined a light. Robert Louis Stevenson is the author of the classic novel Treasure Island, and he was pretty sickly as a child. And one night in the deep of winter, his nurse found him with his face pressed against a cold window pane. The nurse urged him to move away from the window and warned him that, that he would catch his death of cold, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't budge. 
So eventually the nurse approached the window to see what it was that he was looking at, what held his attention. And so she looked out the window as well onto this scene of utter blackness, except for one figure. On the cobbled streets below, the lamplighter slowly clicked down the street on his stilts. Every so often he would pause as he lit the next lamp. Together, Stevenson and his nurse watched the man do his work for several minutes. And after some time, the young boy turned to his nurse and said, See, he's poking holes in the darkness. It's dark out there. Jesus was born into a world of oppressive Roman rule. His birth was announced to a crowd of lowly shepherds. For Mary, for Joseph, for those shepherds, there was a lot to be afraid of. And yes, that was 2,000 years ago, and a lot has changed. But it's still a dark world, isn't it? Parents face Christmases without their children. We fear the next wave of tornadoes or the next strike of terrorists. Certain illnesses mean that some will move through Christmas knowing that it is their last. There are wars and rumors of war. We have reason to fear even now. But friends, into the midst of our fears, into all of the darkness of this world, God is sending his light. God is poking holes in the darkness. That's the message of the angels. It's the message from John as he writes his Christmas story. It's the core of what we celebrate at Christmas. And because of this truth, we can have faith. In Christ, God gives us a reason to celebrate. In Christ... God gives us a reason to worship and to praise God no matter what our circumstances. In Christ, God banishes the fears of our hearts and bolsters our faith. In Christ, God shows us that his promises are true, that the worst thing is never the last thing, and that light always, always overcomes the darkness. As we celebrate Christmas, friends, what we celebrate is that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. And tonight, we too are going to poke holes in the darkness as we share the light of Christ with one another. You all hopefully picked up a candle and as The handbells lead us and we sing Silent Night together. We will be sharing the light of Christ with you. Nick and I will come down the center aisle. We will light the candle of the person on each end of uh, the pew and then you will pass the light down at the pew. One quick safety tip. If you are lighting your candle, tilt it. If you are, if you're helping someone else. If you already have the light, keep yours upright. And in this way, we will share the light of Christ. Will you stand now?
Tonight, not unlike the lamplighter, we have sort of symbolically poked holes in the darkness. As you go forth on this evening, as you prepare to celebrate Christmas, may you receive Christ anew, and may your life reflect the light of Christ in the world that banishes the darkness every single day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.